And, and I accidentally walked in and I looked at these two studies side by side, and they both had significant reduction of pain. Both imported, reported sleeping better. Both had overall improved health effects. And I said, this is impossible. These are impossible because these couldn't, these, I mean, they were grounded, but they had all these EMFs and I couldn't even get rid of them and one didn't have any. So that was the day that I realized that it wasn't EMF and static electricity and all these things that were causing these health problems. Excellent. Welcome so much to my channel. I'm very excited to have you with me today because so many of my audience have been asking me about grounding and I thought, who can I talk to? Who is the guru? And here you are. So welcome. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, I've been doing this for about 25 years and uh, so, so, and I'm still going, but I, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, come and share with you a little bit about it. Firstly, and I know you've said this story a lot of times, but I think it's really important to understand the background of how you got to this position today. Would you be able okay. to share with the audience what happened to you, and especially in relation to your health scare that happened? That had not a lot to do with how I got here, except that it was the point where I made a life decision to change my direction in chasing the corporate you know, the, the mountain of corporate um, success and so on. But, but anyhow, just to start out for a little background, you know, I grew up in Montana, uh, U.S., and uh, in pretty much a, a cowboy when I was young. So I spent a lot of time in nature. Growing up, I was, you know, I was a cowboy. That's a boy who sits on a horse, rides around the pasture, makes sure the cattle are healthy and happy and whatever. If one is acting different than the rest of the herd, you pull them out, put them in a holding pen, and then you go check the pasture and find out, you know, what's going on. Is the water okay? Are the weeds too short? Is there, I mean, are noxious weeds growing? But something in the concept, something in the pasture um, contributed to the ill health of that cow because in nature health is natural so if you keep the pasture clean and pristine etc then you have help, uh, healthy happy cows and so on but anyhow so i grew up with that mantra of prevention and and so if something is wrong with one of the kids or whatever let's say you know what what have you been eating or what's eating you you know because something is interfering with the natural state of health. So I've always had that. And then you didn't have a lot of sickness and a lot of illness back in those days. I would, I'll be 79 tomorrow. Uh, I've always been healthy, fairly healthy. And I've always, you know, tried to eat right and tried to, you know, but live more in the natural uh, scheme of things. When I left that environment, I, I went to work in the communications industry. And in that industry, you have to ground everything to the earth in order to maintain electrical stability and to prevent fires from um, lightning or any kind of an electrical event and so on. And uh, so anyhow, um, <clears throat> I spent about 30 years in that industry. And then I re when I was about 50 years old, I um, was going to a bunch of Christmas parties and I ended up with a, you know, started getting sick in early December. And I went to the doctor several times to try to figure out what it was, what was going on. And they ran test after test. But each week, you know, I just come back for another test and they weren't giving me any answers. And I was getting sicker and sicker. And so I, uh, I ended up going into the emergency room because one morning I woke up and I was yellow <laughs> and I lost my, you know, I wasn't vision was impaired and just I just was weak and I said I'm in real trouble I need some help so I got to the emergency room and <clears throat> that night they uh, took a CAT scan and they found that I had an abscess in my liver uh, one of the docs called uh, from a Swedish medical center in Denver and they said they wanted to do some experimental surgery and so I had no option uh, so I said sure whatever um, and so they went in and they 
cut out, I think it was five sixths of the main lobe of the liver. And I went to ICU for a couple of days and then there was nothing they could do except keep me on antibiotics and so on. And so I went home and it took me six months to be able to get my energy back enough to walk a mile. And I had to add every day. I had to work at it every day. But eventually, my liver grew back in six months, 100% in size. Not the same configuration, but it grew back 100% in size. So at age 50, I had a new liver, <laughs> practically. And um, so anyhow, during that process, um, and that's how we kind of get to the grounding here, but um, <clears throat> I didn't know anything about grounding at that time, other than I did spend a lot of time outdoors laying on the grass. And, and I learned that from my Native American friends, you know, uh, and, and so on. And a lot of time in sunshine. And eventually I just, my energy came back and everything worked. And, and um, <clears throat> then or I woke up one morning and I looked out the window and I had this, I, I saw the pine needles and they were more vibrant. They were kind of uh, energetic and the sky was a vibrant blue and I didn't I thought maybe it was hallucinating from the meds or something I didn't know but anyhow as I as I experienced that I looked around the room and I was in kind of a, a different state because I'd almost died you know and you think you look at the world differently when you come out of that and um, so I I looked around and I realized that wow I almost died and if I had died then my kids obviously would have come and one of them would have taken this, one of them would have taken that. I was, I had a huge collection of Western art, collected it for over 30 years. And, but I thought, you know, most of my kids and they didn't know why I bought any of that or why I fell in love with it or what my life was about and how it interacted with all these things. And it was, it just sent a cold chill over me. And I realized for the first time that I had spent my life collecting things whether it was art or cars or whatever, and building bigger and bigger houses and you know, to protect them and store them and take care of them. And, um, and, and then I realized that, you know, when you come close to death, you know, you're going this way and that stuff's staying here and nobody knows what it is and probably nobody cares. Uh, so it really uh, just, I, I had an epiphany that, you know, I never owned anything. All I ever did was collect things and take care of them. I spent my life taking care of them. And I re so I ended up giving away everything I owned. Actually, And I had a 5,000 square foot two bedroom home on a mountain in uh, Evergreen, Colorado. <laughs> so I really had this, I mean, I was a different person. I sold everything and I bought a small RV and I took off and I started traveling across the United States. And I, I would stop and see my kids or whoever along the way. And because they were scattered all over. And then, um, but I was down in Key Largo, Florida, one, one, about four years later and watching the sunsets and everything. And, and I had this strange feeling come over me. And I've always been a very earthy person. I grew up in nature. I've always known that everything around me is alive, is conscious in their own right. You know, plants and animals and the bacteria, everything is, this is a living thing that I'm a part of. And but anyhow, I had this feeling as I was looking out over the bay that something, you know, that I needed to go back home, go back west and do something with my life. And through a small series, I ended up in Sedona, Arizona, of all places, just quite by accident. And I was actually headed somewhere else. And I just stopped there. And but I woke up that morning and looked outdoors and, it, and it's a beautiful red rocks and lots of vegetation and this beautiful creek running down the middle of the town. And I said, you know, I'm not leaving here. It's like living in a national park and I can stay here as long as I want. And so I, I stayed there for about two years and I went on the computer and I kept crashing. And this was how grounding started. So I kept crashing and, and I brought it up two or three times. So I, as soon as I touched the computer, it would crash. It was static electricity and I knew, I knew what it was. And so I went and found a piece of copper tape, laid it across the top of my desk and connected it to a ground cord and connected it to an electrical outlet. So it was grounded to the earth via the electrical ground. So then before I would touch the computer, I would touch the tape with my fingers. Then I could touch the computer 
and then it wouldn't glitch and then I could go put my orders in. And it's, things like this only happen on certain days of the year when there is very dry and there's a lot of um, charge in the air. So, but anyhow, um, so I put my order in and then I, I immediately after that, I got everything done, I walked outdoors and I was across from this little uh, tourist area and called Talakapaki. And um, they, they have a lot of tour buses, but this one tour bus pulled up and out came a, you know, a column of, uh, they were tourists from Japan and, and they were, you know, a little shorter in stature, but they all had on white Nike type shoes. And so I assumed that they'd just been to a strip mall and they were on sale because they all looked the same. But anyhow, so after that, I was sitting there on the bench watching all this and intuitively, I just said, I, I, I wonder if there's a consequence to humans no longer being naturally grounded. And you wouldn't think too much about that unless you'd spent 30 years grounding equipment to prevent charge. And, and, um, and I, I really didn't know, but I went home that night played around with some meters. And then I decided, well, I, I'm going to experiment. So I went to the hardware store, bought a roll of three inch wide metal duct tape. I taped it across my sheet, connected it to a wire, threw it out the window, connected it to the earth. So it was grounded to the earth because this is how we got rid of electrical noise in with, you know, uh, amplifiers and transmitters and receivers and everything in the communications industry. We ground out, we ground everything so it protects against uh, electromagnetic interference and noise. So I assumed that's what it was. So I went to, I, I sat there and I uh, was playing with the meter and I would touch the, the ground, the grounded tape. And then automatically all of the electrical noise that was being measured on my body disappeared. That's what I expected. So in that case, I was a, like an amplifier. I grounded myself. Anyhow, I, I, the next thing I remember, I woke up in the morning and the meter's down by my side. The problem was I was like 54 and I had a lot of chronic pain. I had skied for 20, 30 years. I played tennis. I've been a cowboy. I've done everything and I had every kind of ache and pain anybody could ever have. In fact, I even remember walking outdoors one day, looking up at the sky and saying, God, why did you make my body with so much pain in it? From there, Clint, you when you was it true that when you woke up after that first experience, that is that right? You didn't have pain anymore? I had a couple of friends uh, in, in, that I'd met down there. And <clears throat> I told them what I, I told them what I was doing because nobody sleeps and everybody's got pain, you know. And but I didn't know anything about pain then, but so I said, you guys got to try this because you're going to sleep better because I would just knock out and go to sleep. And um, <clears throat> so I made up, went over to their homes and grounded their bed and their mattresses or their beds with the tape. About three or four days later, one of the guys comes over and he says, you know, he says, do you think there's any that, that this is can affect my arthritis pain because my arthritis pain is way down and I'm not doing anything different. And I said, no, I don't think so. But I went home and then I realized that all of my chronic pain had pretty much diminished and I didn't need to take the Advil to go to sleep and, you know, for the pain and so on. Well, I, I didn't understand it. I said, you know, I, I don't understand why grounding would reduce pain. Back then, this was in the 1900 or back in 97, 96, get back in there. Well, the word inflammation wasn't in the English language. And that didn't come along until 2004. <laughs> and so pain, you know, hardly, if you go to the literature and look up what is the cause of pain, what is the cause of chronic pain? It's always cause unknown, cause unknown, MS, cause unknown. And I thought, man, this is crazy. You know, these guys, all these money, all these buildings, all these institutions, they ought to know everything. <laughs> but they, so that was a surprise. So I went down to Tucson, down to the University of Arizona and I started poking around down there. And just looking for why does grounding affect pain? And nobody knew anything. And so about a few weeks later, I said, okay, this is real. Everybody at the ground, they get, they sleep better and the pain goes away. And I said, okay, so I need to go out to UCLA where, you know, a big institution, they, they know everything. So I went out there, uh, ended up connecting with the sleep lab, some people in the sleep lab there. Uh, and I, I was telling them what I was experiencing or what I was doing. And they said, you expect us to believe that you're going to tie a 
put a nail in the ground, tie a wire around it, and then tie it around somebody's toe, and they're going to sleep better. They said, get out of here. You're nuts. <laughs> Anyhow, I did, we did carry on about an hour-long conversation after that, and they told me how studies worked and, and the, how expensive it was to do a study and all those things. They wanted like $5 million. Said it would take five years. And, and I said, you know, this is too important. There's too many people in pain. I said, this is too simple. This is, you know, a natural phenomenon. You know? I went up to Ventura, California. And I ended up finding 60 subjects, like they told me, grounded 30 of them, 30 of them were ungrounded. So it was kind of an anecdotal study more than anything. The ones who were grounded after about six, eight, six to eight weeks and when we collected all the data, almost everybody had pain reduction. Almost everybody slept better. So anyhow, we knew we had some results. The most important thing that we learned at that study, because I came from the communications industry, and I thought, well, it's got to be electromagnetic interference, environmental electric fields, because just looking at your background, you live in a sea of EMF. The whole world does. You can't stop them. People can come in and talk about them, whatever, but you, you can't uh, inhibit it unless you turn the power off to your house and maybe your neighbors too. When I was doing that study, I went to this two homes. One of them was like an 80-year-old man who had just had cardiovascular uh, issues, major issues. And he looked like warmed over death, very gaunt color and so on. And But when I went into his bedroom to check the, you know, for environmental electric fields, static electricity and all, there wasn't any because it was an adobe type home, earthen floor. And there was only one lamp in that room and it was on the other side on a, on a you know on a little dresser uh, i thought well this is really unfortunate because this guy's not going to get any benefit because there are not any emfs so then i went across town in the afternoon we installed another lady she was up in her 80s but she had chronic debilitating flaring arthritis i mean her is just red and hot the emfs in her bedroom were the highest i had ever seen the people I went to before didn't have any EMFs and they were next to the ocean <laughs> and on in a dirt floor adobe home. And then when I grounded the person, the woman who had the high EMFs, I couldn't even get her down to as low as you would normally find in an average home for the EMFs. So I said, I'm not going to get any results there. And I didn't get any, I'm not going to get any results for the other guy. But about a month, month, six weeks later, when they were taking in all the study information and looking at it. And, and I accidentally walked in and I looked at these two studies side by side and they both had significant reduction of pain. Both imported, reported sleeping better. Both had overall improved health effects. And I said, this is impossible. These are impossible because these couldn't, these, I mean, they were grounded but they had all these EMFs and I couldn't even get rid of them and one didn't have any. So that was the day that I realized that it wasn't EMF and static electricity and all these things that were causing these health problems. So the discovery, first discovery was the, that earthing reduced pain Second and sleep better. Second discovery was it wasn't about social or it wasn't about EMFs and all those kind of things because there's no studies or no information out there anywhere that those things really cause health issues anyway. There's a lot of talk, but no studies. Uh, then we ended up with uh, an anesthesiologist that had just retired down in San Diego. And he said, and he was looking at it, he says, you know, I, I see what you're doing and I don't really understand it. I said, but I'd like to help you do another study where we can measure, you know, use a biomarker. And so we measured cortisol. So anyhow, what we found was before all of the uh, subjects, their cortisol profiles were like spaghetti all over the place. Younger ladies had higher um, cortisol high anxiety and so on. The older ladies had exhausted adrenals, so they had very low cortisol at like at 6 a.m. and throughout the day. But after we grounded them, they all synchronized into a nice, perfect band. Uh, they it increased, the lowest was around midnight to 4 a.m. At 6 a, or 4 a.m., then it, cortisol just shoots up. And then at 6 a.m., it reaches a peak 
And that's what gives you the energy to get out of bed and, and get on with your day. And then it depletes throughout the day. For the first time, we recognize, okay, connecting to the earth has an impact on, on you know, on our biology, on physiology, on, our, um, on the hormones. And so that was an important study. That was what gave us some credibility with the first medical community. And so that ended up leading us to produce another 30, 35 peer-reviewed published studies, which all together suggest that if you ground your body to the earth and absorb earth's free electrons, then you cannot have inflammation. What I loved about your, what happened to your story is how you followed your intuition. It's so rare yeah. that people actually follow and can see these little, these little markers and, and you followed, followed that along the way in your journey. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> There's something I've always, even since I was a little kid, you know, I spent a lot of time out in the pasture. You know, you got to find ways to entertain yourself. And you got a dog sometimes, sometimes your brother's with you. But generally, you're out there just kind of doing nothing. And um, <clears throat> and and so you, you, you pay attention to all the plants and the animals. And the animals are quite friendly. And, you know, when you're just in the pasture with them. And, but all of a sudden, you feel like, you can you have a sense you have a third sense or sixth sense and you can communicate with them <laughs> and even plants I mean, and we know that now uh, plants have feelings plant you know and all of these things i mean it's remarkable and yeah so i've always been in tune with this thing that is bigger than me i'm not sure what it is but i know it's ever present and i've learned many times in my life to quit thinking and quit doing what fix trying to fix the world a way I think should, and just go with what shows up. And this all showed up. I, I remember when, after I uh, went back, came back from uh, Key Largo. I, I I I wanted to go do something with my life that was. I, I didn't want to die again or close to it, and, and go through that experience. I went because I wasn't happy with myself. I had a lot of things. And I was very successful, but uh, you, you, when you die, you die alone. You know, it's it's a personal thing. So on your way out, you want to. I mean, I wanted anyway to have that feeling that, you know, I had been more of a contributor rather than a consumer. <laughs> and so I've made my life about that. I, 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 money is essential in order to do anything, but. Um, but it's not about the money. If I had to work for money, I would, it would be over right this second. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's such a, it's a lovely, it's a really important message. And I, yeah. I completely agree with you. I think that you look at searching for meaning, <laughs> searching for purpose and, and, and you found, and, and we're grateful <laughs> to you for that, that you found uh, exposed the, the world of grounding. But can I also, I wanted to pick up on what you mentioned before about EMF, because I'm interested in in this. And I mean, obviously so many people are. And in your book, which I've got, thank you. Oh, it's backwards, yep. but it's it's a wonderful book. Thank you. <laughs> and um, it, you talk about uh, EMF and the studies that have been done, um, because I was also interested in that you must have be aware of the work by like um, Arthur Furstenberg with the Invisible Rainbow. And oh yes, sure. I just wondered, um, could you talk a bit about the EMF basically and grounding? Well, well, the the EMFs, you know. Uh, when I, uh, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, it was real popular. Everybody, they were starting up businesses and going out and, you know, EMFs were the cause of people not sleeping. They were the cause of MS, diabetes. They were the cause of every damn thing in the world. And, and, uh, and but there were no scientific studies, no clinical studies anywhere. I've never been able to find one that demonstrated that EMF alone were the cause of of um, health disorder, and uh, if they are, I can tell you how they could be. But the the and, and what I had to do, I always had to boil everything down to the very bottom. What's the foundation? Why does grounding work, and why does this work? And you know, because there's a ten thousand different things out there on the market for everything. You can go to a hundred different doctors, and you're probably going to get at least ten, fifteen different. 
products or solutions thrown at you. Um, but anyhow, so the point is, I don't care what anybody does, and it's not my business. But 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 what I did learn was <clears throat> uh, there's there's nobody that I could ever find died from exposure to EMF. But you would think that half the world were dying from it, according to the EMFers. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of research about how these things can, they're everywhere. They are going to, uh, you are going to have a charge on your body if you are ungrounded. Now, does that charge from the EMF cause health disorder? No evidence. I've not been able to find the evidence. And I've been doing research for 25 years. But anyhow, so I come down to the final conclusion. The problem if you ground the body, it will push away EMFs from the body. That's electromagnetic interference. That's what we always do in the communications industry because we don't want any electrical signals or noise leaking into a, a cable or whatever and creating noise or static or short circuiting and creating fire. Anyhow, so but <clears throat> so that's a byproduct. When you, but it, the event that has to occur before you can get rid of EMF by grounding is you have to get grounded. If you're not grounded, then you can't get rid of the EMF. Okay, so I, I just use cowboy logic. You know, <laughs> excuse me. We have to start where you you have to start with the Earth because when you're grounded to the Earth, no EMF, no e ELFs the ones you're exposed to in your home. The only way you can get rid of them is you have to ground the body first. And that's why the EMF industry and myself got all crosswise because I went to one of their meetings, a, bio, a biobiologist down in San Diego, and, and they invited me down because they wanted to know more about this grounding. And so I went in and back then they were all, all about magnetic fields. They hadn't heard of electric fields. I was really the guy who brought and told him, I said, you need to be worrying about electric fields because it's the active agent, not magnetic fields, because magnetic fields will go through brick. You know, you're not going to stop them. And um, so, but, but anyhow, it's, I, so I come to the conclusion, well, grounding has to happen first, no matter what. And then, but not only when you ground the body, not only does it mitigate and push away EMF, it also normalizes blood viscosity. <laughs> reduces pain, prevents inflammation, and all of these things. So the, it's just cowboy logic. The problem is that we lost our ground. We lost our connection with the planet. And in order to put that in perspective, and it wasn't until you know a couple hundred years ago that people started wearing rubber sole shoes or you know the like, and those were mostly work shoes and so on. Before then, everybody wore, bare, wore barefoot or wore leather. So shoes and leathers are like skin, they're conductive. And then in 1960, if you go look at the growth of, you know, autism, lupus, MS, diabetes, um, cancer, all of these modern health disorders, the date that they all started going exponential was in about 1960. Diabetes was in the 1950s, early 50s. And then I don't know that they were really monitoring this stuff, but there's a curve that's going like this exponentially, even to this day. More and more people are, are sick from diabetes, lupus, MS, cancer, uh, cardiovascular disease. And then you look at the work that Ritger and the boys did back at Boston Mass. Time Magazine came out with the article, you know, about, and it showed the body, a picture of the body with on fire, flames. And what they were saying was, you don't have cancer, you don't have diabetes, you don't have all of these chronic health disorders. What you have is chronic inflammation in the body. Let's say you have a pathogen, a uh, the immune system sends a neutrophil, it'll swim over, find it, and wrap itself around the pathogen. And then it will release what we call reactive oxygen species. Now, the word reactive is how I discovered how you know how the body you know how inflammation and all this work but the word reactive means that it's producing a molecule that's powerful enough that it can rip an electron from the pathogen the shell of the pathogen and that's how the immune system destroys pathogen 
But the significance of that is it takes thousands of volts to rip an electron away from something. So our immune system is very powerful. I'm talking about the innate immune system. And so there's, there's knowledge in the body. There's <clears throat> knowledge in the, you know, it's, it's like we are the earth of walking around. I mean, we're from the earth. We eat the earth. We breathe the earth. We drink the earth. And when it's all said and done, we go back to the earth. So we're a part of the earth. We're part of the, we're the earth up walking around. And I don't know how that's all, uh, what causes all that or how that comes about. It's just, it's, it, it's a, it's a knowing thing. And, and you learn that from spending time in nature, especially when I was young. So then you go back and look at all of this health disorder that we experience today. When I was a kid, you know, back in the forties, we grew all of the food we ate, you know, in the garden or wherever. Uh, we had meat throughout the year. We had, uh, you know, healthy, everything was healthy. We grew it. And, um, and then in the middle fifties, uh, we started going, they built a Safeway store and we started going there and we would buy 25, 50 pound bags of flour or whatever, and take it home. And, you know, they do the baking and stuff, but, but we lived very naturally it was in about 1960, somewhere in there, then the fast food came along and everything went to hell in a handbasket. Now we don't eat. Um, we don't, you know, the air is contaminated in many cases, the, the water is contaminated, um, and we're drinking out of plastic bottles, which is probably worse than drinking out of the creek. Um, and, um, you know, we've done so many things to our food and to our, so, so we're suffering from environmental health disorders. I, I, I mean, we, we need to go out and sit on a rock in nature and just sit there and meditate and let nature tell you who you are, where you came from, and what you need to do to have health. And health is a birthright. Health is a gift. You see it in the animal world everywhere. Which brings up another thing. It's like animals in the wild. Cancer barely, if ever, manifests. Uh, animals who live indoors with their owners, they end up manifesting the same health disorders as their owners. 50% of them die from cancer, just like their owners. So this is an, an environment. These are our environmental health disorders, meaning we had changed our environment. We did, we lost our ground. We lost our connection, our electrical connection with the planet earth and the universe, because it, it's the sun, you know, it's the radiation from the sun that energizes the earth. And that energy is what creates us and all living things. And so it, it's all systemic with the universe. It's a bigger thing going on here, but, to really get to the bottom of it as far as health goes, health is natural. Health is body's most natural state. If you don't have health, then something you're doing is interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain health. And the thing that we discovered or that I've put 25 years into now is when I connect somebody to the earth, I don't care what they've got, you know, MS, lupus, whatever, over a period of time, calms the immune system down, puts the fire out because now the body's flooded with free electrons. And you increase the negative surface charge in red blood cells by 270% just from putting your foot on the earth. That's huge. Now that, that normalizes blood viscosity, get into the capillaries. And, and I tell every woman, you're going to look 10 years younger in 15 minutes. And it's true because the blood circulates once a minute. I mean, it's just remarkable. It's, it's, oh my gosh, Clint, there's so much to pick up on what you said. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. Just, no, no, it's, it's incredible. Do you know, I think what's amazing with what you say, I think you're, you're such a terrain theorist at heart. You're, you're into everything of how to, you know, the way you talk about um, how nature, all the influences and the toxicities in the terrain, you know, and how, how that is what health is. And right. I, I have to say a, a blind sight for me has been grounding. I didn't know about it. It's only been right. for me. I've only woken up to a lot of things in the last three years. Um, and uh, one of the big sure. things we talk about on, on my channel is germ theory. And so uh, my, my audience, they get a little bit uppity about pathogens and germs, just so you know, but sure. I, 
<laughs> it's that everyone's, you know, it's different. But I agree with you completely about the chronic inflammation. Um, this is so important. And But what I really wanted to ask you about, because I was thinking about this yesterday when I was going to talk to you, was that, you know, I come, I was a doctor and I come into conflict when I talk about germ theory. But I was thinking, for you with the shoes, <laughs> Have you had lots of conflict with the podiatry um, industry? Because I find, I re- I had a, just sorry, as a random anecdote, there was a podiatrist friend that we had. And I remember saying to them about, I enjoy walking around be- in the bare feet, you know, bare feet. That's what something I like doing. And they said, that's bad for you. That's bad for your feet. It's stressful. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think that uh, a few million years of evolution proved that to be wrong because that's what got us here. You know, I I have to tell a story and I I have nothing against doctors. If it weren't for doctors, I wouldn't be here because they've saved my life a couple of times. Anyhow, um, you know, I have a couple of friends down in, uh, well, I don't know if I call them friends, but they're people that buy earthing products down in Southern California. And and they have, they run a cardiology office. And they have a couple, three cardiologists and then the staff that it takes to support all of that. And uh, anyhow, so they started, this is 20 years ago. They found out about the grounding products because we were grounding the riders of the Tour de France, um, you know, back in early 2000. One of their, those riders came in, was a client of one of them. And so they ended up starting to buy, buying the yoga or the uh, earthing mats that we use for the Tour de France. And and anyhow, one day he called and he said, he put in an order and he said, you know, I need another dozen of this and whatever. And so I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna be down in San Diego. I'll just drop them off. And he said, sure, stop by. And um, I went in, gave him the stuff and I looked at him and I says, what do you do with all these products? And he says, oh, we use them for the staff and our families to stay off the hypertension meds. <laughs> and all of those kind of things. And I said, well, why don't you give them to your clients? Because they really work well for cardiovascular issues. And um, he said, oh, no, no, we could never do that. He said, if somebody walks through that door, and he was pointing at a door, said, if somebody walks through that door, they're worth X number of thousands of dollars just to run, start running the tests. And then he said, if I do not put them on script, they're going to go to somebody else. How I keep them on keep them coming back is I have to, you know, follow up. And there's, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but what I'm saying is it, we're trapped into a paradigm where the doctors can't provide. I mean, they, like he said, you know, look at this building. I got to pay rent. I, you know, I'm married to a woman who's married to a doctor. She expects to live that way. <laughs> you know, being funny, but, but it goes on and on, but we're trapped into this paradigm. People go to school for 10, 12, 15 years to, to, to be docs, surgeons, and so on. And and uh, when they get out, they've got debt, they've got a big investment, and they have to go to work and start making a living. And there, there's a, uh, an existing paradigm out there. You have to stay within those boundaries. Otherwise, you can't function. And, and so it's it's not that it's bad. It's no different than you know a car dealership or grocery store or anything else. We have to have all these things. But... Um, the medical institutions are, it's a little bit of, it's kind of hard. And and then also further, you know, the, what they call the alternative health, I don't understand that word, but the alternative health community, by and large, um, there, there's only like 5% of the people or less that participate in that. And and so it's not like you can take care of five percent and forget the eighty-five or ninety-five percent. You know, so it's it's this is something it took years and years and years to happen. Sixty years ago, we invented synthetic sole shoes that everybody could afford to wear, and now ninety-five percent of the people wear them. We didn't realize that it was the thing that was going to cut off our ground, and our bodies were going to become inflamed because of the ungrounded radicals. And I remember when they used to talk about you had to have blueberries to get rid of free radicals. I said, what planet are you people from? (laughs) And the body doesn't work that way. But anyhow, um, 
yeah. but anyhow, it's what it is. And so it's really, I can tell you about grounding. One thing you know, we're saying in the last 25 years, 90% of our customers or more are women between the ages of 30 and 60. What do they all have in common? Um, they all have some form of autoimmune related health disorder. Women, you know, most, I think 90% of the visits to a practitioner are female. 90% of all script sold to female. 90% of all um, um, vitamins, nutraceuticals they're sold to. So the health is a women's business. Now, if a woman has a health problem, and not only that, 80% of all women sleep alone. I would never in my life believe that. But women are, I mean, we're social animals. We're social community creature types. And why do women sleep alone? Because they're in pain. They are suffering from autoimmune diseases. Now, I hope somebody proves me wrong in all of that, but I've been doing this for 25 years. And, uh, but, but anyhow, um, so if something's wrong, a woman's going to do something about it. The man says, nah, no pain, no gain. I'm going to fight through it. He, they, men don't do anything until they have the first heart attack. And then they get serious. <laughs> so it's a crazy world that we're in. And, you know, just going out and getting grounded is almost impractical for anyone to do that. And anyone who is germophobic or however you say that, um, you know, that's the last thing they want to hear. <laughs> On the other hand, it's the best thing they can do because the more I remember when I was young, my youngest daughter, she was like two and she was out in the backyard and she was eating a handful of night crawlers. And so I, uh, my wife called the doctor and said, what's going to happen? You know, whatever. She said, don't worry about it. It won't harm her. It'll just build her immune system. <laughs> And so I never, ever worried about what my kids ate after that. But, but yeah, it's, uh, this germ thing is gone to, hey, let me, let me, I can tell you where that all come from. You know, I'm 79, but when I was in like fifth grade, something like that, I went to class one morning and the teacher drew up on the blackboard. She drew a bowl of oatmeal or a bowl representing bowl for oatmeal. And then she drew a little speck and she said, this is a germ. And for years, I was looking for that germ. I, I almost quit eating oatmeal or anything like that because I was looking for germs. But that got implanted in my mind when I was young. It took me a long time to get over it. And um, um, but what we teach our, you know, what we teach and preach, and it's I, you have to go back to nature. You can go out in a field that's halfway clean. Uh, and eat dirt. You can do that. It's not going to harm you. <laughs> you can't offend me too about saying anything about doctors. Believe me, I've been even more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I the, the, the videos I make are very strong about this. And I mean, the health system is the third leading cause of death in America. You know, it's yes. um, it's it's a terrible and like you say, it is. It's it's a business model, and people have to be you know, have to understand that. And and I what I love about grounding is how simple it is. And I think that's the, where the disbelief comes because you think, how can this be, this can't be right. This That it helps so much and it's so simple and it's free. You can go outside, you know. <laughs> but nature is free. All the good things, the sunlight, the, you know, health is free. Health is the body's most natural state. You, and, just, and to appreciate that, you just go out in nature and watch the wild animals. Look at the plants. If they're not contaminated by humans, you know, the soil or the, you know, food or whatever, then they have health. They live out a normal life. Some, most animals, they're going to live out, you know, within, they're going to die within a few months of some number of years. Can, can I ask you, Clint, too, what, so for your kind of day-to-day -day regime, how much, like, what do you, how much grounding do you do? What's your kind of, and what would be your suggestion to people who are just starting out into grounding? I've been grounded for 25 years. Um, and it started out as experiments. <clears throat> and uh, so barefoot is the easiest, least expensive. There's no expense. <laughs> You just have to spend enough time, you know, like 30 minutes. I would say if you're going to get, so, just go outdoors, get a chair, 
find some grass, set the chair down and take your shoes off, put your feet on the earth and just sit there for and take and read a book, anything, do whatever, or just enjoy the scenery and, and just breathe. And hopefully you get just a little bit of indirect sunlight on you. And I guarantee you in 30 minutes when you get up, if you go up, get up and go look in the mirror, you'll see that you look 10 years younger. Your blood viscosity and your, your blood shifts, uh, you increase the negative surface charge on red blood cells, so it normalizes blood viscosity. Now the blood can get in and out of the capillaries and it can donate electrons along the way because it's a charge carrier. Yeah, the inflammation, your energy comes up, uh, you, you're breathing a little easier uh, and you drop a charge and you just feel better, you know, and so on. So I would say the number one thing to do is go outdoors and ground yourself to the earth. If you can't go to a park, if you can go down by the creek or where there's some, you know, nature and, and identify the impact that it's having on your body, just the immediate things that occur in like 30 minutes. And if it feels good and feels better, and then after 30 minutes or an hour later, you're walking and going home and you don't feel as good, there's a message there. <laughs> or you get into your home, your pain comes up, you can't sleep and so on. Um, <clears throat> but anyhow, so then over the years, we, uh, I've spent 25 years doing the research. 10 years ago, we had to, maybe less, we had to, we had so many people that were in our studies that wanted to take the products home that we were grounding them with the sample mats that we had made up. And then they came back and wanted them for their mom and then for other people and so on. And, and, and that's why we are pretty much a female oriented business. There was a time when we said, you know, there's so much of this going on that we can't, you know, we, we're not going to get into the manufacturing business we don't want didn't want to because i was in love with the research that's all i wanted to do even to this day i'm still doing research or promoting research studies and so uh and, and more like the clinical type now or supporting other people i'm not doing i'm not a doc i just coach people and say try this and here's some money go do it please and and write it up if you can and get it published if not then we'll go on but anyhow um so the number one thing uh, that we ended up, we saw a demand. We had to give these people something because they had these benefits in 30 minutes or an hour or four hours, whatever it was. And and they looked different. They felt better. And, they, and like the women, I heard it so many times. I've got my life back. I feel like I have my life back. One lady who had terrible MS, she wanted to be in the study. And we couldn't let her be in the study, but because she had driven so far to get there, we said, you know, just sit down and we'll ground you and just tell you what it would have been about. Because she said she had to go to the bathroom every 15 minutes and, or 30 minutes. And, and I said, that probably won't work for the study. So anyhow, we sat her down and one of the guys was talking to her and, and about an hour and a half later, she gets up and she says, I got to go pee. And she goes in. And not only in that time, the nerves had calmed down in one of the arms. And so she could relax and rested. And she was in a lot of pain when she came in. And then she went to the bathroom and she came out crying. She says, I look like my old self again. I've got my life back. And this is just like in an hour and a half. So that's how powerful grounding is. Grounding is electrical. It operates at the speed of light. It doesn't stop the pain at speed of light, but it stops the inflammatory process. It shuts down the radicals and protects the cells from being damaged by radicals. And then the immune system can go, stops creating inflammation. So then it can go back to work, putting the fire out, cleaning up the mess that it had created. Then it can go back to normalizing health. Um, so, but anyhow, so we saw this man and we, so we started making up various types of mats that people could sleep on because that was the easiest thing they didn't have to do anything extra, just go home, lay down, go to sleep like you normally do. And then the grounding does its own thing automatically. And so then, and then so we made different sizes, we made different styles. Uh, for a few years, we used cotton and silver, but the silver kept oxidizing and went bad really quick. So we stopped that. And, and then uh, we went, finally we ended up developing a carbonized, uh, a carbon material that uh, is kind of like, um, in a sheet, a carbon sheet, 
and it has a grid underneath of it. And it's kind of a high tech little piece, but anyhow, so it was least expensive. It would last 10 years versus the cotton, which would last, if lucky, 10 months. And so anyhow, so we kept improving the product because what we knew we had to have was we can't tell people or show people these results unless we and give them a product unless the product reproduces what we have in the studies. If we can't do that, then we have to stop this. And and so anyhow, the carbon mats did that. And so we ended up with making a little mat, you know, 12 inches by 30 inches. You can put it in bed, sleep on it. You can put it on the floor, put your feet on it, use it on your desk, whatever. It's very inexpensive. I don't know what they sell for anymore, but they're well under $100. I think you can get two for 100 or something like that. And and then we made then we realized that the bed pad is the the main thing that people needed. Um, so we made mattress pads the same size as the mattresses, and just put it on top of the mattress, put the sheet over the top of it, lay down and go to sleep. And then as the with the sheet over it, you don't have contact, but your body perspires at night and create hydrate hydrates the sheet. And you have covers on top, so you are electrically grounded, and it works perfectly. Or if people's health is really compromised, sleep directly on it. I've got one of your mats. Okay. They are awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It's um, I, I've been. I was just more. It amazes me how simple it is, and I think it's such a great option for people, particularly to, if you, you know, for nighttime, so you can have that whatever, six to eight hours of contact, of grounding, if you know, you know, you can't, it's difficult for you to go outside. I think it's such a great option right. for people. And not only that, that's the, during sleep is when the body heals and recovers and restores itself. I, I really just, like I say, I love the simplicity of it. And what for people who are wanting to find out more about earthing products or your work, your research, where, where can people find you? Okay, <clears throat> the earthinginstitute.net is where all of the studies are and all of the questions and answers. And there's a PhD scientist there. They'll answer any question you have uh, and, and give you, provide you and guide you. Earthing.com is a little, a little accidental company that we started <laughs> so we could sell these little products and not have them interfere with our normal company. And uh, but earthing.com has the uh, the simple earthing products I was talking about, and then earthing revolution co.uk. Uh, Jennifer over in uh, London also is a distributor, she sells a lot of uh, the earthing products. Because the, the other thing, um, Clint, I just wanted to mention was you were involved in a, a fantastic documentary that I'd also recommend that people watch. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that looks, that was fabulous. I, I thoroughly, it's entertaining and it's also just very educational. Yeah, it was, a, yeah, the Earthing movie. It's on YouTube. It's free, no commercials. <laughs> it's on Amazon. It's on, you know, some of the other platforms, but, uh, and some of them have commercials and so on. Uh, it's on Gaia, and, but that has commercials, I think. Um, but you just go to YouTube. It's free. It's a, there's an hour. It's a feature film. Um, but there's one that's called, I think, Down to Earth. It's a 15-minute one that was the kind of the trailer for the Earthing movie. It went viral, it went to over to 100 million people in just 90 days, first 90 days when it came out. But it goes to show the interest that people say, wow, can this be? And, and in that movie, I, that's where I made the statement. I said, you know, everything's electrical first, chemical second. You know, it's the electrons that create life. I mean, you know, you have all these molecules, you have all of these things, you know, you have an electron, then you have groups of electrons and groups of molecules and all of whatever, they make up organs, they make up whatever. But the body, if you don't, when they, if you don't have an electric, if you can't measure an, uh, uh, an electrical pulse, you're dead. So it's electrical first and then chemical, you know, you have your immune system, you have your normal processes and your, hormone cast you have everything goes on but it all you have to have a good energetic uh source i mean you you have to be you have to connect to the earth and, and get re-energized with the earth and maintain that especially during sleep because that's how the body works that's how it got here grounding is 
primary. It's fundamental. It's like sunlight, air, water. It's the earth. It, it maintains the electrical stability of the planet and of all life on the planet. When you lose the connection, then somebody's something is, is going to die or it's going to be burn. It's going to oxidize and burn up, which is what all of these modern health dis disorders are, chronic mm -hmm. oxidation. Yeah, because I, I look at it too. It's sort of like water, food, grounding, you know, sleep. These are things we absolutely have to do. And like you say, it's just been removed from our lives now. And yeah. um, you can see the the health problems as a consequence. Can I also just yeah. ask a really quick question? Because I just sure. I just wanted your opinion on, on it. Um, do you, or do you have an opinion about 5G and that the, the influence? Get ready for 10G. Get ready for 20G. It has to happen. If everybody wants cell phones and everybody wants all this video on demand, you got to have more bandwidth and you're going to have more people. So, but anyhow, to, to say it another way, uh, <clears throat> when they first came out with cell phones, they predicted that 10% of the population would die within 20 years from brain cancer or something like that. And then they went on to something else and something. You know, you have to give the people credit. Not all the people, for sure. But some of the scientists, some of the people who test all this stuff, know all these things, that they're not going to put something out that's going to harm people and kill people intentionally. Now, you know, it's something like this, because uh, it's, you know, but cell phones are not, I mean, cell phone signals are not going to be absorbed by the body, go through the body, damage the heart or do anything. That's nonsense. Um, I will tell you what, and just so you know, because you brought up about the EMF, you were concerned. If you are ungrounded and you are sitting in an EMF, you can measure a charge on your body. Now, there was a time when, when I was a kid that if I went out in the woods and there was a bear a quarter mile away, I could sense that bear. I could feel that bear's energy. And it's called the bear in the woods effect you know, or whatever. Okay. Now, today we have lost that sensation. We've lost that sensitivity because there's so much noise in our environments. We don't sense anything. But anytime you walk into uh, an oscillating electric field of anything, then yes, the hairs on your body are going to be wiggling a little bit. You may not be able to measure because it's 60 hertz going on and off. So when you're on non-grounded, you're not protected from this stuff. So when you are ungrounded, then your body is going to be charged with these electric fields. And all they are, they are not particles. These are waves. So they're not you know, it's not like a chemical entering your body or anything. So the only thing it can possibly do is um, stimulate hair follicles, or whatever. Your hair is an antenna. It can sense things in the environment. It, it can chronically elevate cortisol because cortisol is your fight or first fight or flight response. So if you're in an area where there's, you know, craziness going on or uh, excess noise, excess anything, then the sympathetic nervous system is going to start, uh, or yeah, you know, the sympathetic is going to start producing shots of cortisol. And if this goes on and you have uh, end up with chronically elevated cortisol, then you're going to end up with anxiety, irritability, and sometimes depression. And then it's going to eventually create more uh, pain and it leads to illness. I no, I completely agree with you. And 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 like I, I'm a convert, Clint. <laughs> I'm okay. a grounding <laughs> convert, and I just I'm I'm grateful that you followed your intuition and your sense, and and <laughs> and have spread this out to the world because we're we're grateful to you. <laughs> yeah, I still do every day. That's I have a mission. I know what I'm doing in the morning, and I know what I'm thinking about when I go to sleep. It's how to move this one step for, forward. Do you have any, what are your plans going forward? Do you have any exciting things coming up in the future? Yeah, we are working on uh, getting a few more studies that are more, uh, a lot of the science we've done is over everybody's head. You know, it's, it's more for professionals. Uh, we need to help uh, produce more information or more ways that people can get grounded uh, inexpensively. So we, you know, we came out with a flip-flop. I think we give them away with every order. Um, uh, a grounded flip-flop, it was just 
it was something we could afford to make and give away or sell very inexpensive so more people could experience grounding. Now we're coming out with a kind of a, the slides, you know, kind of like the Birkenstock and then the, um, uh, the, the tennis shoe type, you know, the cloth popular ones. Those will be out within four or five months. So we'll have a full line of shoes and we brought the price way down uh, because there's been a hundred people try to get into that business. The problem is, is you, they don't, nobody understands the marketing and the education that is required to bring a new product into the market. Fortunately, we've been doing this for 25 years and we have a large customer base and a large following that want these products. They are the ones who wear them and say, oh my God, it does work. Then they get one for their mother and then they get one for their sister. The average woman will buy 10 to 12 and the average person who starts, woman who starts grounding will buy 10 to 12 earthing products and give them away to her immediate family the first year. Wow. <laughs> It That's, sells itself, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pain. Amazing. It's about it's pain relief, inexpensive pain relief. And the thing mm -hmm. women love about it is they don't really need to understand it. It just works. So do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, Clint, thank you so much for your time. I, I'm really, I'm pleased. <laughs> thank you. It's it's been really um, fascinating for my for myself, and I hope <laughs> um, that the audience will be happy that I had you on our show. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, I'm glad. And um, yeah, the main thing is, uh, it's something that we all have to experiment with and everybody needs to do their own study based on their own issues because everybody's different. Everybody's got beliefs and attitudes and all this stuff. That's irrelevant. This is, uh, there's some cowboy logic here, just common sense. It's the earth. <laughs> yeah. And just try it. Yeah. Yeah. Just have a go. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. yeah, there's nothing to lose from it. That's what I love about it too. No, no nasty yeah. side effects. <laughs> no. And, and the more compromised your health is, the faster you will notice recovery. Mm. People who are, you know, are, you know, marginal, they get grounded. And sometimes within a week, two weeks, they are a brand new person ready to get up and go. And that's how, rem that's how remarkable the body is and the immune system. I mean, the body is, it's so much more than people understand. It's not about just, you know, it's, 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 you know, you pay attention to who, what you think, what you eat and um, um, reconnect. <laughs> it's fun. I love it. If you enjoyed this video, please visit support.dsam.com 